It was a poison that was killing my body and my soul. I lost my sense of identity. Even though I was living, I was lifeless. I lived like a zombie. I was the most obnoxious, incorrigible and most hated person in my family, among my friends, among school authorities. Hello everybody, my name is Joseph Dinesh. I'm generally known as JD and I hail from the city of Chennai in South India. My father is a retired bank manager and my mother is a retired school teacher. More importantly, I come from a third generation Catholic family. My grandparents converted from Hinduism to the Catholic faith by the missionary activities of the Britishers and that's why my parents became Catholics and that's why they baptized me as a Catholic. I started feeling a transcending peace in my heart and mind and I just did not know what was happening and uh, I can't explain myself in words and it was a supernatural experience. As a child I was hopeless, as a teenager I was hurt and wounded, as an adult I was depressed and addicted. It was only the saving grace of Jesus that brought me back to life. Growing up, uh, my parents made sure I received communion, I received confirmation, I went for Sunday Mass, I attended catechism classes, I studied in Catholic schools. But in spite of all their efforts, I did not have a personal connect with God and for me being a Catholic meant nothing. And because of this, my practice of faith was very ritualistic and it was never internalized. Everything that I did in terms of faith was done unwillingly and was done without knowing why I was doing it. So I can confidently say, growing up as a child, my faith formation was very, very bad. On the other hand, I also come from a troubled family. Uh, even though my parents were the two most good-hearted people that I've ever met in my life, they had their own issues. So most of their time was spent by fighting, arguing and disrespecting each other, which took a toll on my character formation. So the lack of love that I faced growing up as a teenager really disordered me in so many different ways and that led to a very, very bad character formation. Growing up, I was the most obnoxious, incorrigible and most hated person in my family, among my friends, among my relatives and even among school authorities. I was sent out of my own home by my parents three times. I was given TC uh, three times in the schools that I studied and I created trouble everywhere I went. So that was the kind of life I was living during my schooling days. By the time it came time for me to uh, do my college studies, my parents could not stand me, I could not stand my parents. So we came to a mutual agreement that if at all I do college studies, it will be in a residential college far, far away from home. That is where my college life started. For the marks that I re uh, received in my 12th standard, I got a really well-reputed residential college far away from home. And uh, the only catch was that the college was a hardcore Protestant college. Now, at that point in my life, I did not know the difference between Catholic or Protestant. I went to college as a troubled young teenager, hoping that my life would change. I still remember the first day as I entered my hostel room. I was holding a rosary in my hand. I was crying, I was sobbing and desperately asking God to touch my life and change my life. So from that day on, I made sure that I surrounded myself with good friends. I started listening to amazing preaching on the Word of God. I also went to the prayer group every day and I started reading the Bible. And I did this meticulously, faithfully for around two years. And I could see, finally, finally in my life, my restless heart found rest and peace in God. As I was continuing on this journey, I was transforming. I was going through a very strong transformation. From the most obnoxious schoolboy, I was transforming into a most likable college student. 
As I was going through this transformation, I also had a realization. I'm going for Sunday service, I'm reading the Bible, I'm going to the prayer group, but I'm not doing the things that I was doing as a child, like saying the rosary, going for confession, and spending time in the Blessed Sacrament. And that is when it occurred to me that there is a difference in being a Protestant and in being a Catholic. I also had sporadic heated arguments with my Protestant friends about the Catholic faith, uh, especially because my room shelf was full of statues of uh, saints, Mother Mary and Jesus pictures. And they used to come and ask me, doesn't the Bible say that you are not supposed to do idol worship? Why are you seeking the intercession of Mother Mary? Why can't you directly talk to Jesus? The usual uh, questions that arise from the conflict areas of Protestantism and our Catholic faith. And I should say that I could not defend the Catholic faith and my effort was in vain. Because um, my half-baked knowledge about the Catholic faith was no match to their biblical knowledge. And it was not that they were just knowledgeable, they were convincing, they were relentless and they were passionate. I just could not withstand the onslaught after a period of time. So I finally gave up and I gave in and I officially became a Protestant. As a first sign of protest, I took a beautiful statue of Mother Mary and I threw it outside the window, never to see it again. I started attending Protestant conferences, vacation Bible camps, Bible study groups, and by the time I came out of college, I was just not another Protestant. I was a fundamentalist. So after four years of my college studies, I came back home to Chennai and I started working in a multinational IT company. But my focus and my attention was to do ministry and to be of service to the Kingdom of God. So I went to different Protestant churches and I started asking them for opportunities to play in their Sunday service. It was not only that I was not getting opportunities to play in these Protestant churches because the number of musicians are very high and the competition is also very high. All these Protestant churches were uh, sprouting up in outskirts of Chennai, started by young pastors. So I could not afford to go every Sunday such a long distance and play in these Protestant churches. I was wondering what will I do to make sure that my musical talent is constantly growing. So it was around that time I got a call from my parish priest from, my, uh, from the Catholic home parish and he told me come and play for the evening mass. And I was thinking, okay, I'm not getting any opportunities to play in any Protestant churches, so I might as well play in a Catholic church. So I started playing for the evening mass. I played about for six months. Then one day I got a call from a person from the Jesus Youth Movement, and he was asking me to come and play for the Chennai Music Ministry. And I was wondering, why am I not getting opportunities to play in the Protestant churches, and I'm, all the opportunities I'm getting is from the Catholic side. Anyway, just to make sure that my musical talent was growing, I said yes to, to play in the Jesus Youth Music Ministry. And once I started playing, I really got involved. I played for the Night Vigil, I played for the two-day retreat, discipleship program, conferences, seminar. And I got really involved and I was really enjoying the experience. But even though externally I was a Catholic, inside my heart I was still a Protestant. I could not get that away from me. Until one day, I was called to play for this big gathering in Stalamaras College in Chennai where around 500 or 600 people were gathered. So it was a th three-day program. On the last day, they had an adoration scheduled at 8 o'clock in the night. So the stage was wonderfully decorated. There was a spotlight on the Blessed Sacrament and there was pin drop silence in that campus. As I kept my fingers on the keyboard and I started playing, I started feeling a transcending peace in my heart and mind and I just did not know what was happening and uh, I can't explain myself in words. And it was a supernatural experience. After that experience, I did not feel uncomfortable calling myself a Catholic, even though I had a lot of intellectual doubts about the Catholic faith to be clarified. But I would say that was the turning point in my reversion to the Catholic faith.
In 2009, I joined the Loyola Institute of Business Administration to do my MBA studies. As most of us know that as an MBA student, the schedule is very, very tight. So that did not give me the space to be actively involved in the Jesus Youth Ministry. So I stopped doing all the good things that I was doing till then. I was living in a hostel with a single room, with a laptop and with high speed internet connection. Little did I know that this will turn out to be a clear occasion of sin for me. And that is when pornography started taking root into my life. I used to go to class in the morning, come back to the room, watch pornography throughout the night and next day continue the same routine. And all this got intensified when I started working after two years of my MBA studies. All my friends went to different parts of the country and I started feeling lonely. I started seeking solace in pornography and at that point pornography was just not a habit, it became part of my life. When you stop doing the good things, the evil things have more space in your life. The worst happened in 2015 when I, asked, when I was asked to come to Delhi to work as a marketing manager and I took a flat and I was all alone, no family, no friends, no social interaction, no ministry and that is when pornography took hold of my life and I was officially addicted to pornography and I hit rock bottom. And this pornography addiction destabilized me and I was not able to do the work that I was doing. And my company asked me to submit my resignation so I submit my resignation, I came back to Chennai with full of despair, depressed and addicted and finally I knew I was in the lowest point in my life. Even though I was in deep sorrow and lost all hope for my life, God never gave up on me. I knew that if I stayed back in Chennai, my life would become more miserable, I would become more depressed and more addicted. So I packed my bags, I went to work as a volunteer in a HIV care home for children run by St. Kamala's Fathers in Bangalore. It was there that I gave my time, my talent, my gift, my emotions, my energy to the children who are living there. In the process of giving, I regained my humanity, my sense of identity and finally some sanity in my life. So one day the director of the care home called me and he asked me if I could speak on a particular saint every day after the evening prayer. So I immediately accepted the opportunity and I said, yes father I will do it. So the next day I started searching for saint videos on YouTube and for some reason, miraculously and providentially, I stumbled upon a Bishop Barron video. I was amazed, I was surprised and I was wonderstruck seeing this Catholic priest explain the Catholic faith with such intellectual clarity and bringing out its beauty. From the next day on, I voraciously started consuming Bishop Barron's videos. As I was watching all these videos, I observed that Bishop Barron was constantly hitting three themes in all his videos. The first one was, every person created in this world has a specific purpose. Second is, your life is not about yourself, make your life a gift to another person. Last and final thing, let go of the ego drama and be part of the Theo drama. Little did I know that these three lines uttered by Bishop Barron will change my life upside down. From that day on, I started seeking my purpose. At that point in my life, I also had very strong spiritual direction and I was living a good sacramental life. And one day as I was sitting before the Blessed Sacrament, it occurred to me that if Bishop Barron videos on YouTube can change my life upside down, why can't I do the same in a very small way to people around me? So that is when I started the Song on Fire Catholic Ministries on April 29th, 2016. Right now, the channels have more than 40,000 subscribers. I do music videos, interviews, testimonies, commentary videos, reaction videos and whatnot. 
As the Catholic Church teaches us, evil is privation of the good. Evil can exist only in places where there is the absence of good. Once I said yes to my calling with my occasion with Song on Fire, my life was filled with goodness. When goodness filled me, evil left me and I overcame my pornography addiction just like that. As someone who has overcome my pornography addiction, I can tell you that pornography was just not another habit or another sin. It was a poison that was killing my body and my soul. Because of my pornography addiction, I lost my job, I destroyed all my friendships, I had a bad relationship with my parents, and most of all, I lost my sense of identity. My journey is not so much about my conversion from Protestantism to the Catholic faith. It's not so much about me overcoming my pornography, but it is about me identifying my life's purpose saying yes to God's calling and doing what God wants to do through me. But after Song on Fire happened, I started spending hours before the Blessed Sacrament. And when I looked at the Blessed Sacrament, I felt in my heart that I was forgiven. And I always used to wonder, why did I have to go through such trauma, such trouble with my parents? But looking back now, I feel that the whole journey with my parents was a sanctifying process in my life. When I said yes to my calling with Song on Fire, I knew that I had to become a full-time minister, which means I had to let go of my career. I did not have any financial security. I did not have any savings. So people around me told that, who will marry you? First of all, you are a difficult person. On top of that, you are a full-time missionary. So you are, not, you are never going to get a girl to marry you. But God works in mysterious ways. It is through the same Song on Fire ministry that I met my wife. Initially, we became friends, then we became really good friends, and then one day I proposed to her, and then she said yes. And the funny part is, we got married exactly on the day Song on Fire was inaugurated, April 29th, 2022. So I'm so happy that she's there in my life. Most of the time we forget that our salvation journey is a work in progress. We have to constantly work cooperating with the grace of God. So once Song on Fire happened, I made sure that encounters of grace are constantly there in my life through the sacraments, Holy Mass, Confession and Blessed Sacrament. And we also know that our salvation journey is not a lonely one. So I made sure that I have a very good set of friends and a very strong Catholic fellowship. And third, I also made sure that I have very good spiritual direction because I need someone constantly tell me the truth so that I could increase in my virtue. But most of all, I try to follow the law of gift, which St. Pope John Paul II describes beautifully. You increase in the measure that you give it away. Today in my life, I'm constantly seeking for opportunities to give and make my life a gift and a blessing for everyone. As I look back at my life in retrospect, as a child, I was hopeless. As a teenager, I was hurt and wounded. As an adult, I was depressed and addicted. It was only the saving grace of Jesus that brought me back to life. Today, I can confidently and proudly say that Jesus is my savior. Turn back towards God. Rise up. <laughs>